Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery facilitator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. This month, we're going to be exploring lens based art. And what this category uh, means is generally anything that has a lens. So, like in a camera, at the front, the glass that you're, you're not supposed to, to touch, or the lens that you look through to see through the other side. Um, in animation, that's also considered a lens-based art. Photography, um, cinematography, or videography. So anything where you're taking a video camera um, and recording it, those are all lens-based uh, artworks. And so that's what we're going to be exploring this month. And that's exciting because um, where I am situated in so-called Vancouver on the stolen and ancestral territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil um families and peoples, it's currently Capture Festival. And Capture Festival is a festival that happens in Vancouver that celebrates lens-based art. So we're gonna to celebrate together with Capture Festival all this month through Explores. Today, what I thought we could explore is we could explore what happens when we go through the lens. What I mean by that is, is that we, we always talk about pictures and movies about us being on this side of the camera and then the action or the story being on that side of the camera. So the camera, and it could be a mobile device, it could be a video camera, whatever we're holding in front of us between us and the subject or us and the story, this becomes a kind of wall or um, barrier one side 
the other side, like a line in the sand. And so what I was thinking is we could start to explore rather than uh, both sides is what happens right here. And whether or not we know exactly what happened. So right now, um, what I have in my hands is an old uh, Kodak Instamatic X15. And so it's, it's, an older, it's an older camera such that, that uh, they don't even make film um, for this, or at least not without a special order. So I can't just go to the grocery store or um, a drugstore and pick up some film. But this, this used to work. I'd put film in the back and I would wind up the film and then click. I would take a picture of what was happening. So I could open this up and I could take this apart and I could go, okay, this is, this is how the light travels and this is how it, um, the, the chemical changes that happen on the film. But let's pretend that whatever device you have or that we're gonna make today, that we don't actually know the science. We don't know what really happens. And because we don't know what happens, we can ask ourselves what happens and imagine and come up with ideas of what happens here, which allows us to think about um, this kind of barrier in a different way. So if that makes you excited or you're interested in following along with me today, I'm, um, I'm excited to take you on this exploration through the lens. So if you're gonna be making along with me today, or just gonna follow, that's, that's all good. Do you have any paper? I pulled a bunch of paper out of my recycling bin. I have some stuff that has things on one side. Oh, I think I used this in a previous Explorers and then I didn't use both sides, so I hadn't taken it down to the recycling room yet. I've got some crinkled paper. I've got some ripped paper. I've got different sizes. I've got paper I've, uh, I've got writing on. So remember, it doesn't have to be perfect paper because nothing we're doing today is for keeps. We're just exploring and playing with art today. Do you have any mark making tools? Mark making tools are anything that make a mark. So I have markers because I always find they show up the best when I'm filming um, explores, but you can use anything that marks the page. So that could be pencils, that could be crayons, that could even be dirt if you have permission. So anything that will mark the page. Then on my sticky here, I have a dotted line. And usually that means um, anything under the dotted line is uh, optional. So if you have it or if you wanna try it, but you definitely don't need to have it. Um, to explore with us together. And so the first thing that I have after the dotted line is a camera. And so if you have a camera, if you're allowed to have a camera and have it in your making area and be able to, and we're not gonna, we're not actually gonna do much with the camera. It's going to be a prop. So it's gonna be like a toy or an object that we just place in our making space and we're inspired by it. We are um, influenced by it. We look at it and um, it helps us um, come up with pictures or ideas um, because we can see something um, and it just helps us with our imagination. But you absolutely don't have to have one. You don't have to have an old camera. You could have a brand new one. You could have a mobile device. You could have a toy camera. You also don't have to have the camera participate today because remember it's under the dotted line. The next thing that I put there was toys. So same thing with the camera if it helps you to be able to put things on the other side of the camera. So I'm sitting on this side and if you wanted to set a scene or if you wanted to um, pretend like there was something that the camera was going to take a picture of to help you today, that's great too. So if you had some toys ready to go you could totally put them there but again it's under the line, so you don't need to have them. If you don't have them now, as we're making, you can also go looking for some and bring them in later. There's one other thing that I think I forgot to add here. And what I did was I pulled out my scissors. If you've made with me in Explorers before, you know that I love ripping paper, so I don't usually pull out my scissors. But as I was thinking about some of the things we could try today, um, scissors might be something There we go, I just wrote scissors, um, that you might like to have as we're making today. So if you have those, you might wanna pull those out as well. 
All right, so I have all the stuff that I'm gonna explore through the lens today. I'm gonna move some of my uh, materials and stickies to the side so we have a bit more space to make. That sticky doesn't want to sit flat. Well, I'll just put my bunny toy on top of it. There we go. All right, so I've got a bit more making space. Camera off to the side. All right, so first of all, if you don't have a camera, here's one of the things that you could do um, to give yourself a visual. So I'm gonna grab one of the bigger pieces of paper that I have here. It's got some crinkles on it and put it in the middle of my space. And I'm gonna take a mark making tool and I'm just gonna draw a camera. And remember how we were talking about a wall, this idea that it was like a divider between the subject or the things that we were filming or that we were animating. So things that people see and then the camera and then us on the other side. So um, what you could do is you could put, you could draw um, you could draw a camera really small, you could draw a camera really big, you could draw a camera facing up, you can draw a camera looking from the top, you can draw the camera however you want, but I suggest you put it in the center of the page to give us space to think about what happens on this side of the camera and what happens on this side of the camera. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually draw the bird's eye view, so the view from above, and um, I'm gonna leave a bit of space here so that I can imagine what actually happens um, in the body of the camera. So I'm going to draw the body here and I'm gonna draw it pretty big. Oh, well, that's not a great Sharpie. I think it's starting to run out of ink. So I'm gonna close that up, grab a different one. Okay, let's see. Uh, and then the uh, the lens comes out a little bit here in the front and it's just off to the side. There we go. There was the little button here that I have to press. Oh, after I wind the film. There's the lens in the front and one more that comes out. Leaving that space, even though there was a place for my flash to go in and a place for the logo. Um, but I think I do want the little wind trigger there because that seems important as well there we go so that's that's where I put my camera and I put it basically in, like in the middle and you know what because I've been talking about the wall and I really like that word I think I'm just going to draw a wall or like a line that comes out to the left and the right of the camera making it really clear that this is where I am or the person who is going to be taking the picture Taking. the picture and then the subject um, or who or what is in the uh, picture. I remember picture could be a moving picture, like a movie or an animation as well. Okay, so we've kind of got this line here. And now if you wanted to take your toys, and you wanted to, to set them up on the other side, you could keep going. You could also draw things that are on the other side. Um, because I started with a bird's eye view, I'm gonna pretend like there's a person standing here and a person standing here but you could only see the top of their head. So this person has really straight black hair that kind of goes back. And then maybe we can see the top of their ears. And then this person has really <clears throat> very tight curly hair that actually comes up quite a bit above their head, but you can't really tell that. So I'm just gonna do a whole bunch of circles here. There we go. And then you can kind of see their ears on the top as well. There we go. So there's who um, I could see through the camera. And if I'm looking at my camera, or if you're looking at your mobile device, where do you look through the camera? So if you have a mobile device and the back of the screen can show you, so the, 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 the screen where you can see everything that's happening, 
um, it might be hard to figure out where you where you would look through because you're looking at everything that's on the back here. So if you flip your mobile phone over, can you see where the little circles are, or where the camera is, where you're not supposed to touch with your finger because you might get fingerprints on it? Can you see where the lens is on the other side compared to where you would look? So because I have this really old camera, um, I don't actually have uh, a viewfinder on this side that's really big. It's just this little square here that lets me see out here. So as I'm looking through, and I'm gonna actually put a little thing on my picture there. So that's where my eye would look in. And this is where the picture is being taken. Okay. So I have thought about who's on the other side. I've thought about the camera as a divider and I've thought about me and how I interact with the camera. I have to push that button to take the picture. I have to wind that. I have to look through here. There's so many things that I have to do on the outside, but what happens in between here? And you don't have to know the answer for today's explorers. You could go and you could research how your camera works. And every device is going to be a little bit different. If you had a mobile phone, if you had a tablet, it taking pictures is going to be different than if you had an older camera that has film or a newer camera that has film or a digital camera that uh, records things onto an SD card that you then have to put into a computer, um, printing, the the pictures there's so many differences and uh, nuances between each device so that really gives you the opportunity you who are watching and you who with ev whoever you're making to really go well each device could have a different story so because i want to try a few different stories with you today what i'm going to do is i'm going to take another piece of paper you don't have to do this but i want to reuse this kind of layout that i already did here so I have, and you can see I ripped paper there. Um, I just laid two pieces of paper over top of the boundary or area. There we go. I'm just gonna draw it again so we can see it, um, of the camera. Do, do, do. There we go. And you could have totally taken your, um, your scissors and cut some paper if you want, if you wanted to copy me here. But the reason that I did that was this is one way I'm going to go through the lens and I'm actually going to go through the lens. So I'm going to pretend like I'm a person that is entering and I'm going to go really small. My eye transforms me into something really very small so that I can go in to the camera. And now that I have transported in the camera, I can go, whoa, this is actually more like a video game, because why not? Where the person has to jump up to this part, and then maybe there's a platform, and there is a button here that they have to press, um, and then that button, unlocks here there we go i'm gonna put a chain over to here so if you get over to there that unlocks that so that the person outside the camera can press that button okay then you have to jump down okay then you have to jump down do 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 and then go over to this area where maybe there is a bunch of sticks that have been laid together and there is a maybe a string this is kind of looking like a Rube Goldberg machine now uh, all right and then maybe there's a balloon on the end of that string so you have to jump down and then you have to somehow set fire to these sticks which breaks the rope which releases the balloon which also unlocks this uh the the trigger switch on this side and then how do i exit hmm how do i exit uh oh i don't know 
So you have to switch the trigger, you have to press the front, it takes the picture. How do you get out? Oh, there you go. You have to get back across, because I looked through this way, and then my, my, my sight, so if my little person is kind of like my sight or my vision or my ability to see turned into a little action figure, so I have to leave by here. So how am I gonna get back to over there? I've just done that. Uh, I'm down on this ground. Oh, maybe there is a ladder right here. And then maybe there are monkey bars that you have to climb across. Uh, and there we go. So I have just explored the idea of my vision or my eyes or my sight, the things I see, turning into a character. And let's play the game right now. So I'm going to take another color. I'm going to take my orange. And so the character would start here and goes across here jumps up onto the platform. Uh, what did they have to do next? Oh, right, they had to jump across, run, press the button. Then they had to jump down, go over, set the sticks on fire somehow. I don't know how. Maybe I'll think about that in another if I was going to keep working on this or after our explorers, I really like this. If I wanted to actually make this into a game, I could start writing down questions as I think of them. So like, how will, whoop, okay, I gotta put that there. Will sticks plus fire. I could leave that for myself later to figure that out. Okay, so I've set the fire. And then I have to, uh, which opens that. Oh, right. And then I have to go back this way, up the ladder, and then climb the monkey bars. Don't fall. Strong core, strong arms, almost all the way across. The music's getting really intense. And do, I'm out. There you go. So you can see now the reason why I put the paper there, because that's just one way that I could travel through the lens. Oh, I'm gonna push that to the side. And now I've got this empty space again and I am free to imagine what could happen between this side and this side of the camera. I'm gonna rip another piece of paper. So for this one, what I did was I explored the idea of something abstract um, or something that you can't touch, something that we need to understand or we need to, we need to know about, but it can be hard to put into words what it is. So for example, my sight, my ability to see something. Um, it's, we do it with our eyes, but what is sight? What is what we see? And pictures kind of help us with that by taking where our eyes are looking and taking a snapshot so that we can kind of share our vision. But it's only a version of what we see. So we're taking this abstract, this big kind of hard or difficult concept or idea, and we are making it into something that we can touch. Can touch, or that we can, um, understand because it's more similar to um to us and our bodies big ideas with this one and you don't have to be thinking about those big things if you just want to have a, a game of imagination of what would happen if you were able to get so small that you could go into a camera or if you could imagine what's technically happening in the camera to make your pictures happen so there's a couple of different ways uh, you can approach this. And there's no one right way because we're just exploring. All right. So I drew another box on this other paper so we could try something else again. And you know what? I'm going to cover my sight figure here. 
because uh, that was the idea last time. And there we go. All right. So how could we pass through the lens again? Well, this past time, I just looked at what was inside at the empty space, and I just dreamed about what could be there. I wasn't really paying attention to me on this other side other than my eyes, and I wasn't really paying attention to who's on the other side of the camera. So this time when I'm exploring, I'm gonna think about who is on the other side of the camera or the subject of what I am filming or recording or taking a picture of or drawing in an animation. So what is the connection between this side and this side. Well, if we look at my drawing, and yours could be different because you might have put out some toys or you may have draw, um, you may have had a picture of something different. I'm just gonna move my, my little uh, arcade or video game um, exploration over to the side. So I'm human, that's one thing. And then for mine, I drew two humans. And so me, for me, the, um, the person on both sides, or there, there are people on both sides. That's one thing that I notice. If you had um, a scene of toys, or if you had um, some trees or nature on this side, it might be different. So what's the connection between you and the thing that you're going to draw on the other side and can or you're gonna take a picture of? And can that affect our voyage through the lens? Okay, so I've got people and I'm on this either side. What if I pretended like going through the lens was a way for me to get to meet the other people on the other side? There's a wall, I have to climb it. There's actually something that is keeping me away from my friends or the conversation or the people on the other side. And so we could totally do another kind of video game thing where there's a monster in here that is blocking um, me or you from getting to the other side to meet those other people. But it could also be um, a, a story. And so again, you know what, I am going to, I am going to uh, enter through the viewfinder again because I really like that for mine, that this, this, this is the entry point and this is the exit point for me. But I'm gonna change my eye here into a face. There you go. Now I have a slightly less creepy stick person who's going to go in. And uh, this time I'm going to narrate a story. So uh, this morning I started at home and I was feeling kind of lonely. I hadn't seen anybody for a while. And so what I did was I got up and I went down the stairs and I got some breakfast. And in this case, it's some porridge and it was good. There you go. Then I went back up the stairs to have a shower. Then I went back down the stairs, out the front door, and headed out by car. <laughs> That's not a great drag of a car. That's okay. Um, of a car to see my friends. So for this one, it's still kind of comic book, right? You, you're reading it from left to right. I'm drawing a bunch of symbols and you kind of have to follow it based on the arrows that I put here. So door, stairs, down, some kind of squishy, smelly bowl of something, up the stairs, under a shower, down the stairs, through the door, into a car and out the camera. So this could be the voyage that I took to have to get to my friends. 
And maybe this is just the representation of what it took me to get to my friend's house so I could take the picture. And so everything that happened to me today is actually a part of this picture, even though it might not show up in the final picture. You could also make up an adventure about how you got to your friends and that might influence the picture. So let's try something a little bit, a slightly different. So this is more like what could have really happened to get to my friends to get this picture. But what if we imagine and we go a little bit uh, more creative? So I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna rip some paper again so it fits in the space. And you could just keep drawing a camera over and over again, right? You don't actually have to have um, paper uh, that you reuse like this, or you don't even have to draw. You could just put a camera down um, and look at it and imagine. If you're sitting with some other people, you could sign or you could talk. You could narrate your story to somebody else. You could tell a story to somebody who's with you about what happens inside the camera. That's just as interesting and cool as drawing things and making marks on paper. Um, for these ones, we're gonna throw out or we're gonna put them back in the recycling bin. Um, oral stories, and when we play with stories and words in a group, there's nothing left behind. So there's nothing for keeps, just like um, all the time it explores. But we have these really cool experiences um, that we are sharing with other people, whether we're making things or we're telling stories. So either way is really great uh, when we're imagining and we're um, being creative about uh, different, uh, different objects like this. Oh, sorry, I went off track. So this is this was kind of a, a narrative story left to right about what could have happened for real for me to get to my friends. But what if my idea of taking this picture was uh, that I wanted to pretend like they were in a jungle, in a rainforest, um, and that they were there to help plant trees or that they were there to... Um, meet with and consult with the local indigenous land keepers to help um, um, and to witness what was happening. So all of a sudden, even if I was going to be taking um, this picture of two people who weren't actually in a jungle, but that's what I wanted the picture to look like, maybe I'll have props when I take pictures, maybe I'll, I'll uh, design a scene, maybe I'll draw a background like a curtain that has some greenery on it maybe i'll have some plants around so it looks like they're in a jungle maybe they'll be dressed in a very specific way because they're outside so all of these things we can add and so other people can see but but for us when we're exploring this what kind of adventure would you have to take to be able to get to where um, you wanted to take this picture, to get to a jungle, to get to a place where you could be um, chatting and in conversation with local indigenous uh, land keepers. What would have to be your journey? And so maybe it's not this morning. Maybe it's more like um, you have to go to the library and you have to read a whole bunch of books to learn more about uh, planting trees or about the local nations you're going to be working with. Maybe uh, you have to make a phone call and I know phones don't necessarily look like this anymore. Maybe I'll put a, there you go, there's a mobile phone. So you have to make a call, you're in conversation with maybe um, the local elders um, and then you have to, you meet up for food and sharing of information together so that you can do things respectfully. So there was some tea in there. Um, and then maybe you have to rent a truck to get out there. My car dry, or drawing is kind of weird today. Um, and then maybe you have to like actually travel a really long way. This is a very simple uh, path. I did 
take a pretty big subject there, but, and then out into the, the lands and the rainforest. There you go. So you might not actually be doing uh, the truck part. You may not actually be driving out to a jungle, but if this was the picture that you wanted to take, you might have to do a bit more work before you could take a picture that looks um, authentic or looks right or looks satisfying. So whether or not you're doing something like really big or really complicated, or you're doing something really, really simple, what was the path you had to take in your brain? Or what was the path you could take in your brain? What are the options available to you to be able to get to this picture? I really love this kind of exploration because it means we have to slow down and consider our tools. Sometimes we pick up a camera and we just need to take a quick picture just to have a memory or to have a, an archive or a keepsake, something to keep behind um, for whatever purpose. But with art making, when we slow down and we consider our tools, we're able to get better at using them simply through practice because we're using them multiple times. But we also get to learn um, about thinking about how we could use these tools in ways that are different than uh, perhaps they were intended to be used or different from how other people are using them or just really surprising, interesting ways that we hadn't considered until we slowed down and thought about our tools um, and what is possible. This kind of exploration, when we're drawing what's inside, anything's possible. It doesn't have to be real life. It could be magical. It could be spiritual. It could be a journal. It could really be anything. What can you find when you are exploring the space between you and your subjects? Did you try something new this week? Have you ever um, thought about the space between you and the, um, the person that you're going to be photographing or the tool itself and what's possible? For me, I really enjoyed this idea of journaling my process because sometimes I like to um, rush to get to where I need to go and then have all my things and get things finished really efficiently. By slowing down and remembering that the journey or the things that I had to do to get to a place to be able to make art is really important. If I have time to have breakfast in the morning, I'm going to feel better than if I didn't. And if I had somebody to make a phone call for me, I would probably feel very supported. And having that time to slow down and remember how good my morning was or even how bad my morning was, will help me take a breath and think about where I am in relation to what I need to do next. It's a nice mindful practice. Like always, I'm gonna start cleaning up my space so that I can be ready to make a lawn next week. And I'm excited because Alisa, my friend from Art Stars, is going to be leading me next week and I'm gonna be sending her a challenge so that we can collaborate on this theme of lawn-based art. So I look forward to making a lawn with you next week. Bye for now.